what's up guys? Uh, so today we're going to talk about how many coats of paint you should be using on your projects. In what I can only assume is an effort to be diligent and get the best finish possible, people are using too many coats of paint. I shouldn't say that. You, you can use more coats of paint if you do it properly, but really as you increase the number of coats that you're using and you increase the thickness of your paint job, you're creating more opportunities for something to go wrong and it really isn't necessary. So, how many coats of paint do you need? Well, unfortunately, as is typically the case, <laughs> the answer is it depends on what kind of paint you're using. So for many types of paint, really all you need is enough to get full coverage, which means just enough so that it's opaque. Um, you may need a primer and a clear coat as well, but when you think about it, Let's take, for example, a polyurethane paint job, which is what a lot of guitar manufacturers use and what is typically used on cars, for example. Uh, you're going to need a couple coats of primer, and that's it. I mean, just a couple coats. You don't need ten. You don't need to use three cans of it if, uh, if you're doing a guitar. It's just enough to, to get it coated so that it's sealed up and, and the next coats can stick, the, the color can stick. Right? So you need that. Then you need for example two maybe three coats of your paint your color typically in automotive settings if they're not doing candy jobs candy jobs rather they use two you don't need to uh... you don't need to build up a thick layer of this stuff unless you're using some kind of transparent that that deepens its color as you do that and then your clear coat you want a thick enough layer of clear coat that you can polish you can sand it properly and, and buff it out uh, so again you're looking at three coats so there it is. If I'm doing a polyurethane paint job, I'm using two coats of primer, three coats of paint, probably two coats of paint, sorry, uh, color, and three coats of clear. Now if you're using a water-based acrylic, something that you're dusting on very lightly, it might take you four coats to reach full, full coverage instead of the two that you would use for polyurethane, and the rest of it kind of remains equal. So again, you, you don't need to build up, build up a huge layer, those coats are thinner. When you use your acrylics or your enamels coming out of spray cans, you're going to follow approximately the same scheme. You might need an extra coat because sometimes it's more difficult to get them even, but you don't need to be using several cans of a color. When, like, when people tell me they've used five or six cans of paint on a guitar, I just cringe because often you don't, you don't observe the right uh, rules to be able to do something like that. It's, it's difficult. So you end up with a paint job that never quite hardens or that, uh, that cracks because the stuff underneath all of those layers of paint hasn't had an opportunity to cure properly and hasn't been treated properly when the new layers are going on. These are all problems that, that don't even need to, uh, to be considered if you're not using a ridiculous number of coats of paint half the time. Now where it starts to maybe get a little more complicated I suppose is when you get into the lacquers. When you're using lacquer cans, people are reading the instructions for these and, and it's saying do 10 light coats. Uh, and in some circumstances, that's, that's not a problem. When you're spraying on lacquers, you're putting, on, putting them on real thin. Uh, they don't have to bond the same way that the paints that cure do. Because the lacquer only dries, it doesn't cure, it's going to melt into itself. So you can get away with more coats and, and there's less that can go wrong when you're doing that. However, it's again not really necessary. Once you get your full coverage out of your color, there's no reason to put more color on there. Once you've got enough clear coat built up that you can sand and polish it, there's really no reason to put more clear coat on there except to have a protective layer over your color. And making that protective layer thicker isn't going to change things if you smash your guitar. So it's not necessary. Now if you're using a transparent or translucent lacquer, say uh, an amber, and you want to darken it a bit and you can't change how much tint is in there because it's coming out of a can, then yes, you're going to want to put a few more coats on. Now there it becomes important again to observe, did I say, did I say this before? I don't, need, I don't know if again was the right way to put this. It becomes important to observe your proper recoat times. Sometimes with lacquer you want to be waiting a full day between coats and that's just what allows it to harden enough that your next layer melts into it and, and the stuff underneath isn't left soft. So I hope that clears things up at least a little bit. I know that was a lot of information in a short period of time and uh, 
I just I just want to try and alleviate some of these problems because I'd have no problem with people coming to me with questions and and their problems uh, when they're doing their paint jobs, but you know it's it's unfortunate how many people have to come to me with the same kind of issue. You know, like say I've put this many cans of paint onto my project um, and it's not hardening properly. Like when I push on it, I leave a fingerprint still, or or the finish seems a bit squishy. These are things that can be avoided uh, often by just not putting so much paint on there, really, when it's not necessary. So we're going to call that a wrap for this video. Uh, hopefully that clears things up, and let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also, a big shout out to Sovereign King, who does the vast majority of the music for my channel, way better on guitar than I am. And to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed yourselves. See you next time.